Coping with COVID, updates on the pandemic and information to help you thrive and survive COVID-19. It's brought to you by the South Carolina Department of Health and Environmental Control. Visit scdhec.gov for an updated list of testing sites and important information on how to protect yourself, your family, and friends from the coronavirus. SCDHEC, healthy people, healthy communities. In it together and the South Carolina Diabetes Advisory Council presenting Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday on Coping with COVID. The City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, helping to meet the needs of small, minority, and women-owned businesses in the City of Columbia. Log on to ColumbiaSC.net backslash OBO. Agape Counseling and Training Services. Call 803-779-2777 for licensed professionals of counselors and social workers helping families, engaged and married couples, and individuals of all ages gain an understanding of all aspects of their lives. If you're having a challenge coping with COVID, contact Agape Counseling and Training Services at agapects.com and Palmetto Media Connections, connecting media and communities together. Coping with COVID, brought to you by SCDHEC. In it together, the Diabetes Advisory Council, the City of Columbia Office of Business Opportunities, Agape Counseling and Training Center, and Palmetto Media Connections. Coping. Coping with COVID with Trey Taylor. Good Thursday afternoon. I'm Trey Taylor, and thank you so much for joining us on Coping with Trey Taylor. Today, we're coping with Roe versus Wade. The Supreme Court reversed the landmark decision from 1973 just last week, creating disappointment, disgust, and frankly, fear among those of childbearing age. What the ruling means, how it affects you, and what you can do now. Leading the conversation today, attorney Tamika Isaac Devon from Jabber and Isaac Law Firm and attorney Diaska Spencer, chair of the Richland County Democratic Party. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. Happy to be here, Trey. Thank you for having us. Thank you. Thank you so much both. We look forward to the conversation. Also, after the break, political strategist Bree Maxwell joins us as we cope with Roe versus Wade. That's next on Coping with Trey Taylor. But first, your COVID community updates. Lawmakers are actually back at the state house today holding their first public hearing about abortion rights during a standing room only meeting that began at noon today. Planned Parenthood held a day of action before the meeting at the South Carolina State House. Attorney Tamika Isaac Devine was there. She's a guest on the show today and she'll give us an update a little bit later on. Also, it's time to get your entries ready for the South Carolina State Fair categories ranging from architecture to agriculture to livestock to arts and crafts and flowers are being accepted through September 1st. Visit the FAIR website for a full list of competitors. SCD Heck has your most up-to-date list of times, dates, and locations for COVID testing and vaccinations in and around South Carolina. Visit scdheck.gov for more information. Now, throughout the show, you will see scrolling at the bottom of the screen several pieces of information concerning financial and medical resources, including where you can get your five free rapid self-tests, uh, COVID vaccines, which are being held for veterans at the VA. Also, the retail outlets that are offering a, a COVID vaccinations, Kroger, CVS, and Walgreens. The Comet Bus System, who not only will give you a free ride to get your vaccination, but you can also get a vaccination at the Comet main location at the corner of Sumter and Laurel. You'll also see information about Get Set Up. If you or someone you know is having some challenges getting set up, uh, you can call and uh, make an appointment. FEMA COVID funeral reimbursement, that's still going on. SC Bar Association and SC Legal Services, they have a toll-free number and website for both rental and mortgage help, and also resources including Lexington County Bill Assistance Program, SC Housing and Dominion Energy. And also, if you're having a challenge coping, or coping with COVID. Uh, the South Carolina Department of Mental Health has a 24-hour assistance line called SC Hopes. Temperatures are back up to the triple digits. So also scrolling at the bottom of the screen throughout the show, you'll see information about hot weather tips. Whether you are working or playing outside, there are some things that you need to know. Also, where you can get cooled down in the city of Columbia. All of that information and so much more will be scrolling at the bottom of the screen throughout the show. So please post and share so we can get the message to the masses. You're watching Coping with Trey Taylor. Hey, happy Thursday afternoon to you. I'm Trey Taylor. Don't forget, we are streaming live on the TaylorMade production page. That's the home of Coping with COVID. Please go over there and hit like and share and follow and get notifications as to when we go live every Wednesday for Wellness Wednesday from In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council. And then on Thursday and Friday, 
on Coping with Trey Taylor. We're also streaming live on our YouTube channel. Please go over there and hit the subscribe button. I tell you, we've got almost three years of contents, information, and also interviews that we have been doing since the show aired in March of 2020. Also, we have a presence on Twitter and also on Instagram. Once again, don't forget, scrolling at the bottom of the screen, we've got all types of information, and we would also love to hear from you. Please post and share your questions, your comments, and your concerns. When I say hi to Mitchell Peace Joy Jen, she says, good afternoon. Good afternoon to you, lovely. Thank you so much for uh, joining us, as always, on Coping with Trey Taylor. Well, today we are coping with the implications of the overturned Roe versus Wade decision handed down in 1973, which gave women the right for an abortion without interference from government. Now, that was struck down last week and states across the country, including South Carolina, are making decisions about how to move forward so women can continue to have the right to choose. Joining us today, attorney Tamika Isaac Devine joins us from Jabber and Isaac Law Firm, along with Richland County Democratic Party Chair uh, Attorney Diaska Spencer. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for having us. Absolutely. Tamika, I want to start with you because you were actually at the State House today at the um, hearing that's still going on. Tell us what was happening when you left. Yeah, actually, I um, I got there about 9.30 a.m. Doors did not open to 11, uh, but you needed to get there to sign up to testify. I actually was about number 73, I think, on wow. the list uh, to testify. And unfortunately, I had to leave um, and was not unable to testify. So I'm going to make sure I give my written comments um, to submit it. So I'd like to make sure that everyone knows that you can email the committee to submit your comments. Um, but it was, I think, about 30 people had testified so far um, by the time I had to leave. Uh, and one of the things, and I was telling you and Diaska prior to the hearing, uh, there were only about there were only three African Americans who spoke while I was there, um, and so our community is is really not uh, represented um, at the hearing. And just imagine this is a hearing in the middle of a work day, uh, and a lot of folks cannot take the time to actually right. go up there and testify. But decisions are being made about our lives, about our bodies, and and just so people know, the current proposal currently. The six week ban uh, that passed, the fetal heartbeat uh, that passed last year is in effect in South Carolina. So currently, if you are uh, uh, if there can be a fetal heartbeat detected, you cannot get an abortion here in South Carolina. But what is being proposed right now in light of Roe versus Wade is and what they were t talking about today was an all out ban um, of abortion period. Uh, and a lot of the people who spoke in favor were saying, you know, life begins at conception. And so uh, right now they are considering an outright ban with no exceptions, mm. um, which would include the life of the mother, which would include, um, you know, uh, um, any issues that the child may have. Uh, and it's really scary when you think about our state and the lack of investment in expansion of Medicaid, the lack of investment in communities, particularly communities of color, where we've got people, children living in poverty. Uh, and when you think about the maternal, um, mortal, uh, maternal health, especially with black women. Uh, and so if our state is not going to invest in those things to make the life of families easier, uh, but you're going to take away anyone's choice, it is very scary. And so I just encourage all of your listeners to make sure that they communicate with not just their elected officials who currently represent them where they live, but all the representatives. This ad hoc committee will take testimony via email. And so um, I'll encourage you to please email and let your voices be heard. Yeah, you know what, Tamika and Jaska, it, it is really crazy to me because you're right. We live in a state that doesn't even adequately take care of the kids that are here, <laughs> you know, right. education, um, medicine. But now we are bringing more kids unwillingly really into a state where what what ain't nothing happening always good for the kids that are here we have a system dss that is overwhelmed with the the cases that they have now it just doesn't make common sense to me diaska so according to this all states um don't haven't put the ban into place explain how that works 
Well, every state is sovereign. Um, that's guaranteed, guaranteed to the states by the 10th Amendment to the United States Constitution. And that means that they have a right to make their own laws so long as those laws, those laws don't run afoul of the, the federal law in the United States Constitution. So unfortunately, our state is led by a governor who has decided that a total ban on abortions makes sense. Um, it doesn't. And we're going to need everyone, every community to really stand up. And, and really, this is an attack on women. Women have long been denied equal rights in this country. And I believe that this is an opportunity for us to show those in power that our voices ought to be heard. Um, and and we, need to, we need to show up to the polls in November. Um, in South Carolina specifically, women make up 51.5% of the statewide population. So if we all went to uh, the polls in November and supported Joe Cunningham, who has, has made it very clear that he is pro-choice and that this total abortion ban that Governor McMaster has proposed should be taken up at a later time um, after the election. Uh, I think if we supported Cunningham, it will protect our daughters, it will protect women. And um, a lot of these lawmakers don't understand that children um, don't have money to get tickets and flights out of, of Columbia to other places to even undergo an abortion. So the expense that I, I think that this law will have on um, families of limited means, and, and it's just a reverberating uh, consequence of, of having poor leadership at the top. And, and we just, we can't afford gas right now, let alone a flight to a, a, a abortion friendly state like California, for example. Right. I want to get back to that, but I want to go backwards, um, Tamika. How did we come to this? Why explain to people why this was even brought up to 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 be overturned? Yeah, well, definitely. So and, you know, I always say, you know, you and I talk about this, elections have consequences. Yeah. And, and the reality is um, there have been, uh, there's been a very strategic effort over the last 20 to 30 years to um, to take over legislatures, to take over Congress, uh, and to uh, get to the point where you have, um, uh, you have people who will make decisions, whether it is the legislators or their judges, that would get this outcome. And so if you remember when President Trump was first running, you know, he kept talking, I'm going to appoint judges, I'm going to appoint judges. And he was able to appoint, you know, three judges. Uh, and if you and you look at the six three decision, really five, five, three for the complete overturning of of, of Roe, six three um with um Chief Justice Roberts um uh, on you know part of it, but the the reality is, if you look at the five that voted for the total um, ban, you know uh, the majority of them were Trump appointees, and yeah. so this is how that happened. You have judges who are who are really proposing or are pushing an ideology and not really looking at the law, uh, and this is just a start. When we think about you know how important elections are, you know you have to think about who will be appointing our judges. Who you know? Who um, makes the laws and who makes the decisions in this country? And so, you know, we unfortunately have tended to be uh, we we've tended to be a vote infrequent voters on some issues. Um, and I, I have a friend who used to say, "We come out when we're we're mad or we're passionate." Well, you know, we're not always going to have a Barack Obama who gives us hope and change and all right. that. Kind of stuff, but every single election is important, and if we're not voting then we get what we have. And um, the other thing I didn't say, it reminded me when Diaz was talking and, and, and Joe Cunningham was there to testify. He was actually in line ahead of me. So hopefully his testimony will, will be there today. But you know, the other things with this, and it's really important that we understand what's being proposed. The other things that are being proposed are, it will make it a crime to actually quote, aid and abet someone getting an abortion. Mm. So if you drive someone to the doctor and they get an abortion, you could be charged. Uh, if you give somebody money to help them with the abortion, you could be charged. If you help them, and they called it trafficking of minors, if you take your 16-year-old daughter to North Carolina because you guys have decided as a family that she is not ready to be a mom and you're going to take her to North Carolina to have an abortion, 
you could be charged. And so elections really truly have consequences. And so the reason that we have a Supreme Court that has overturned many, many years of precedent is because it was very, very strategically orchestrated to appoint judges that would do this just thing. And Clarence Thomas said in his uh, in his concurrence that they're not going to stop at Roe versus Wade. They're looking at uh, you know they're looking at same sex marriage and they're looking at uh, affirmative action, which actually is on the docket for this fall for the Supreme wow. Court affirmative wow. action. So we've got to really wake up um, and think about what is happening and how our voting or not voting is affecting the the future that we have. Right. Attorney Tamika Isaac Devine joins us from our Jabber and Isaac law firm, Richland County Democratic Party Chair Diaska Spencer also joins us. We're talking about the implications of the overturned Roe versus Wade. Diaska, you mentioned a little bit and, and Tamika uh, touched on it, too, that there are states where you can get a legal abortion. North Carolina, our you know neighboring state, California. And so you can still go. But is it now still against the law, as uh, Tamika was saying, that, that it could be if you aid someone or if you cross state line or, or city lines or state lines to to get an abortion? Well, currently what's in effect in South Carolina is the fetal heartbeat bill, which means that you cannot undergo an abortion irrespective of your age currently if, if they can hear the, the heartbeat of right. the uh, of the embryo. So, so the, the question you're asking about getting children to, um, or, or people to other people. states, it's, yeah. it's a, it's a telling, it's a great question because recently in the news, there was a 10 year old who was raped, yes. uh, in another state, I believe it was, um, must've been Illinois. Um, but it was, it was one of the Northern states. She was raped and her, uh, state did not allow for her to undergo an abortion. And, and this was parents, the day it was overturned. She was in, yeah, she had an appointment. Yeah, so you you know the story. And so yeah. that's the difficulty. So her parents had to bear the expense of getting her to another location, um, to another state to undergo the procedure. And this young woman, 10 years old, a child, I should say, is raped. So in South Carolina, we have Governor McMaster who wants a total ban on abortion. And as uh, Attorney Devon pointed out, um, that means that he is not going to allow any excuses. He wants a 100 percent total ban and he will punish those who help even their children go out of state for the procedure. Now, he could care less if the child or, or the, the mother or the projective mother was raped. Um, that's a problem when state leadership is not understanding that, you know, the, the ramifications of, of, of boring a child um, that is the byproduct of rape or incest would just cause damaging consequences mentally. Um, and it's just Most not right. it's not their call. It's just not their call. And I think that call needs to be made by the individual. What are some of the implications for the organizations like a Planned Parenthood and some of the other organizations who help women uh, who want to have abortions? How does this impact them? Uh, Tamika, do you want to chime in on that? Yeah. So today uh, the testimony was an ad hoc uh, committee of the House. Uh, there's a House bill, I think it's 5399, that has been uh, introduced. There is a similar but also stricter bill that has been proposed in the South Carolina Senate. The South Carolina Senate bill actually goes farther and it actually it penalizes organizations that help. Uh, and so um, so basically Planned Parenthood, because they do provide information and that, that's the funny part is information. Uh, it doesn't even have to be actually aiding somebody to actually get right. their abortion. It could be providing them information about abortion services. And so the way I read the Senate bill is it would basically outlaw Planned Parenthood here in South Carolina. Um, which actually goes to how important our state is uh, because a lot of states are, are will be looking at who has the strictest laws and everybody seems like they're competing to have the strictest laws. You know, Texas and Florida have kind of been neck and neck, but South Carolina is really trying to be there. And so the, the executive director of the national uh, executive CEO of Prop Planned Parenthood is actually uh, in South Carolina today uh, meeting with the folks here, but it really could mean that there is no more Planned Parenthood, Planned Parenthood, which provides 
reproductive health, not just abortions, but they right. have reproductive health services for people, particularly people who are in the lower wealth communities. So what that means is a state that we already have very little, very uh, difficulties in accessing good health care, a lot of places is going to get even worse. And we have counties in state, the South Carolina don't, don't even have OBGYNs. Right. So, I mean, this is really grave when we think about the long-term ramifications of these proposed legislations if they get passed. You're absolutely right. It's so much more than just Roe v. Wade. It's so much more than your right to have an abortion. As you both have said, this not only opens up the floodgate for so many of so many of the rights that that we've had for so many years, but again, as you said, Tamika, the healthcare issues, the the um, the opportunity for access, all of these things that, interestingly enough, were brought to the forefront during the pandemic. You're absolutely right, Trey. My neighbor um, out in Long Creek, we live in Blackwood. She's a mother of two daughters. And when Roe was overturned, the first thing she did was uh, went on Amazon and she bought a, a ton of Plan B. And even that is now because of the the, the race to order the Plan B drug, um, it's, it's, it's not even available. People are having a hard time getting it unless they have a prescription. So I worry about our daughters. I worry about children in general in the state of South Carolina with a governor like McMaster who continues to fail people of limited means, who continues to yes. stand contrary to the, the people's voice. And, and that's a problem. And until we stand tall and really face him and, 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 and vote him out, we're going to continue to deal with these problems. And I really want to challenge all of your viewers. I want to challenge everyone that has a daughter or a sister or a mother, uh, everyone who, who wants to protect their wife's rights um, to, to choose to, to vote and support the Democratic nominee who trusts your wife to make a decision. Yeah, a recent poll found 57% of Americans disagree with the decision. And from what both of you say, the biggest uh, way we can fight this decision is to exercise our right to vote. So mm -hmm. let's talk a little bit before I let you guys go about the timeline. So the, the governor's um, race is in November. Is that, it, when, when is the decision about uh, Roe v. Wade in South Carolina set to be decided, so to speak. Do, do we know? I mean, because here's the question: getting uh, McMaster out in November will that um, will that you know is that in that's that enough time? I mean, could something happen before the November election? I guess that's what I'm asking. And either one of you can answer this. Well, Tamika, you were at the state house today, so I'm going to defer to you. Obviously, this is being discussed right now. The law, the proposed total abortion ban is being discussed today by right. South Carolina lawmakers. And if it passes, if, if they put it to a vote, we're going to be in trouble. That means that there will be a total abortion ban, no matter if um, someone is raped, no matter if there is an issue of incest, no matter if they're nine years old or 50 years old. Right. They could not have an abortion in the state of South Carolina. And as um, Attorney Devine pointed out, uh, there there's also consequences for those of us who support people who find themselves in, in that predicament. And that's unacceptable. Uh, I think Governor, uh, uh, the nominee for Governor Cunningham um, has done well to challenge this governor, to, to challenge him to put off banning abortions until after the November election. And I think that's the right next step for um, this administration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So, so technically, so and this is, this also goes to again. This is this has been orchestrated. I mean, of course, when the um, when the opinion was leaked, people knew that this is where it was going to go. And so, when our legislature um, uh, adjourned for the session, what they do is they, it's called a sunny die resolution. That sunny die resolution says, okay, they can come back. These are the reasons that the, you can come back. And usually, it's just to deal with budget issues and vetoes. Well, the Sunny Die Resolution this year said that, or you can come back to deal with abortion. Now, <laughs> now they would not entertain coming back and dealing with the hate crime bill. 
Uh, they wouldn't entertain coming back to deal with education and, and uh, raises for our teachers. I mean, it's been crazy, but they said they could come back for this. So that's why this ad hoc committee is meeting today. So is it possible that we will have a bill introduce and passed um, before the November, it could because the legis legislation uh, allows them to come back. And so the governor can call them back for wow. this reason alone and say, I insist that you, you know, entertain this. Um, and that's why it's so critically important that we don't even wait for November. Right. Uh, we have we have representatives who are meeting now. And so I encourage everyone, please. And um, I'll make sure that you have it. Uh, Trey it is on my social media. If you go to my social media, I have listed the, the email addresses of all of the ad hoc committee members from the House. Thank so you. please go ahead and email them and let them know your concerns or your position on this. But then go further. In addition to you know emailing the ad hoc committee members and the other legislators, there will be different rallies. There will be different opportunities come out. Please come out and make sure your voice is heard. Uh, and then I have to stress that it is one thing to have a governor, and we definitely do need to have the right governor who cares about all these issues, you know, abortion being one of them, expansion of Medicaid being another, and all those. We have to have a great governor, but the governor also needs help. And I always stress, and I know Diaska does this as the chair of the Richmond County Party, is trying to stress to people and understand the importance of all of our elected offices up and down the ballot. You know, we can have a governor, but we remember what Governor Hodges, you can have a governor, but if you you don't have a House and Senate that will help you get things done, right. then, you know, it's not good. So we've got to be making sure that we're electing good people up and down the ballot from, you know, our school board members and our county and city council members, all up to the governor's office and then our national offices. So we got to make sure that we're out there and we're getting people to vote. This this past election, this runoff, this primary and this runoff was dismal. We can't have those kind of numbers again. So if we're going to control elections so that we can have the things that are important to us, we got to communicate with our legislators now, but we also have to make sure that we get people out in November. Yeah. Uh, Attorney Tamika Isaac Javine from Jabber and Isaac Law Firm and uh, from uh, the Richland County Democratic Party Attorney Diaska Spencer. Ladies, thank you so much for joining us today. Thank you for uh, sharing uh, this information with us. Uh, Tamika, I look forward to getting that information so that I can post and share it also. And please, 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 uh, uh, I appreciate your continuing to be available to keep us updated. Thank you, ladies, so much. I appreciate you. And get back over to the state house, Tamika. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Political strategist Bree Maxwell joins us next to discuss just what Diaska and Tamika were talking about, how and why this is the time you should become more politically active. We'll talk to her coming up next on Coping with Trey Taylor. We'll be right back. Hello, I'm Carolyn Sawyer, an entrepreneur and caregiver. Part of taking care of your health is knowing if you're at risk of type 2 diabetes. Pre-diabetes is serious and puts you at risk for developing type 2 diabetes. Up to 90% of South Carolinians who have it don't know they have it. Visit inittogethersc.org. Take an online test to find out your risk and join a diabetes prevention program. This message brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of SC. Computers, they're a part of our everyday life. But when they're not working, they're an everyday problem. So call Computers Unique, your everyday solution. 803-351-5821. Is your computer running slow? Won't turn on? Do you need a screen replaced? Or maybe you just need another computer? Well, Computers Unique is your one-stop shop for all your computer needs. They have a wide variety of new and pre-owned PCs, Macs, and tablets. So call Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall. 803-351-5821. 803-351. 5821. Hi, I'm Mr. Deputy Addie Perez with the Richland County Sheriff's Department Community Action Team. As a mother, I know it's important to take care of my health for those I care about. Part of doing that is knowing my risk for developing type 2 diabetes. So if I was you, I'll take the opportunity to visit inittogethersc.org and take an online test to find out if you have prediabetes. Again, the website is inittogethersc.org. This message is brought to you by the Diabetes Action Council of South Carolina. 
Thank you for joining us again for Coping with Trey Taylor. We are streaming live on the Taylor Made Production page. That's the home of Coping with Trey Taylor. Please go over there, hit like and share and follow and get notifications as to when we go live Wednesday for Wellness Wednesday from In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council. And then of course on Thursday and Friday, we're also streaming live on our YouTube channel. Please go over there, hit the subscribe button and then uh, check us out on Instagram and also on Twitter. Of course, we're talking today about Roe versus Wade. We talked in the uh, earlier segment to Diaska Spencer and also Sweatman and also uh, attorney Tamika Isaac Devine. Rianta Maxwell joins us now with her take. She's principal and CEO of political consulting firm Indigo, uh, widely known for her practical common sense approach to political strategy, issue advocacy, and civic engagement. She has not only worked on several political campaigns, but also has appeared in several media outlets including CNN, MSNBC, NPR, The Washington Times, Washington Post, and also Al Jazeera. Bree, thank you so much for joining us today. I appreciate it. No problem. Good thank morning. Good morning. Good morning. So listen, uh, you know, we just heard from uh, Diaska and Tamika about Roe v. Wade. What's your take on this um really heart-wrenching, but also groundbreaking decision that the Supreme Court just uh, put down? You know, I think it was a long time coming. And I think this is something that the right, the radical right have has always wanted, honestly. Um, the problem is, you know, they want to force women or childbearing people to have babies, give birth, and keep these babies, but yet there's no safety net in place once these babies are here. In a state like South Carolina, where you know we don't even have expansion of Medicaid, our healthcare system is very lackluster, our educational system is very lackluster, and you know we're just behind the times on a lot of things. So there's no real safety net. People aren't thinking about that. Um, people aren't thinking outside the box when it comes to what happens after the fact. And I know a lot of people err on the side of responsibility. But in some instances, what if you are that woman who is in law school and medical school and, and you get pregnant? You're not in a position right now to care for a child. Or even if you are the 10-year-old who was possibly raped by her uncle, you're definitely not in a position to care for the child. So they're not thinking about the trauma that this is going to have and the implications that it's going to have after the fact. And they're also not thinking about the back alley unsafe abortions that will happen with women or childbearing people going forward. Yeah, these are the things that I, I totally agree with and mentioned in the last segment that how can the Supreme Court, the highest court in the land, make this decision without thinking it through? I, I mean, how are some of the most brilliant minds in the country not thinking about all of these things after making such a monumental, after making such a huge decision. And you're right. I mean, we're not taking care of the children that are in America now, more or less bringing more kids into the country. And as you said, I mean, health care, um, uh, uh, education, uh, DSS in every country in America now is backlogged with cases, child abuse, child endangerment, child neglect. Uh, you know, so what mm -hmm. is going to happen now? It, so, so help me understand that. How can, you know, because I'm not a political, you are. Help me understand how these types of decisions can be made without any thought to how to uh, the follow through. So upon doing some independent research, uh, the thing about it is, is the fight is not even with Roe versus Wade. The fight is with, I believe, a case uh, with Casey versus Planned Parenthood and another other another case. I can't think of the name of it. But with Casey versus Planned Parenthood, I believe the issue was that, that we aren't giving states the ability to make the decisions on their own. We created a federal law on abortions without allowing states to decide. So now this gives the power. So with I believe with Casey versus Planned Parenthood, that gave the power back to the states to figure out what they wanted to do with abortion. So we also know that in some of our conservative, mostly conservative states, they do not want abortion and they want to outlaw abortion at any means, at any cost, or even just have, like in South Carolina, the six-week uh, heartbeat bill, or in places like Florida, I believe they have a 12-week or a 16-week uh, bill. So they're not thinking about implications that some women don't even realize they're pregnant at six weeks. 
Some women don't even realize they're pregnant at 12 weeks. But what's going to happen is what I just previously said. You're going to have people uh, getting these unsafe abortions, women going across state lines to places that still have legal abortions. But then the, the caveat with that is in some states, they are trying to even outlaw that. They're trying to outlaw women going across state lines to even get an abortion. Last week, I was reading about the case of the 10-year-old in Ohio yeah. who on the day that Roe versus Wade was overturned, she was supposed to have an abortion because she was raped. But right. when it was time for it to get done, she couldn't get it. And the, the doctors told her, look at this as an opportunity. As an opportunity for a 10-year-old right, to be a mother, <laughs> there's, there's no opportunity there. There's nothing there. There's nothing but trauma that she's going to have to deal with for the rest of her life by forcing her to keep this child. So those are the things we're going to have to deal with. More babies being born, but yet babies not being able to be taken care of. Mothers have forced to keep babies and not having the safety nets in place to even help take care of them. Yeah, Brianta Maxwell uh, joins us. She's with Political Consultant group Indigo. And of course, we're talking about the uh, recent Roe v. Wade decision. Uh, so Brie, what do women have as options? I mean, you said, okay, we uh, women can go perhaps to other states. When will we know what states um, follow through with the ruling? How How is that working out? How does that work? I guess we just have to stay tuned and pay attention to, you know, when our state legislators go back in session and the, the direction they're going to go in. And also with the midterm elections, we'll see how things go that way as well. So I think right now it's, it's time for people to really flex their political muscle because it's a muscle that we all have. So it makes sense for you to use it. While a lot of us have just been sitting back just looking at what's going on, it's time for you to really get active and get involved. Make your state legislators be accountable. Make your elected officials be accountable. Look at this as a health care and a right to privacy issue because that's exactly what it is. Think about what you would want to happen if your daughters or your nieces or your nephew, your even your nephews, yeah. like I said, childbearing people who get pregnant, Think about what could happen to them in a situation where they are not fit to be a parent or they're not in the position to be a mother at the time. So, yes, these are things that people need to do. Flex your political muscle. What? So you make such a great point. First of all, yes, it's boys and girls because a boy boys and girls mm -hmm. make babies and, and it's the implication is yes. for both. So it's not just a woman issue. But you mentioned that people should be more politically active. They should contact their elected officials. They they contact them and say what, Bray? You can contact them. You can write letters. You can be like, this is what I want you to do for me. Not only that, you can lobby your elected officials. You can vote. A lot of times we people aren't voting they're not yeah. voting at numbers that we have voted in the past people have voter apathy and also you can run for office but in the event of you running for office don't be a single issue one issue person look at it from the standpoint of you're making sure that you're taking care of a demographic or a whole caliber of people for the for the reasons that you decide to run for office so those are things you can do from, from calling your elected official writing your elected official um lobbying your elected official and also running for office yourself. There are a number of things you can do besides just sitting here being upset and being afraid. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and you, you can also give to like Planned Parenthood. Planned Parenthood. Work with them to figure out things that you can do. NARAL. So there are abortion groups um, across the country, women healthcare groups across the country that you can get involved with as well. You mentioned Planned Parenthood and, and I'm glad you did because I was going to mention that how does this affect Planned Parenthood? You know, I guess we just have to see because what people also have to realize is Planned Parenthood is not just a place for abortions. They also help women with contraceptives and it's also a, a health care clinic for women, basically. So I think what this means is that depending on what states they're in, we'll have to see what happens because what we also know is there are some places that want to outlaw contraceptives as well. 
So right now it's a waiting game, but you don't have to just wait and sit on the sidelines. You can actually do some work behind um, the action. Yeah, it always comes back to being active in, in your community, in your state, in, in your town. Mm -hmm. It always comes back to um, not just sitting back at the hair salon or the barbershop compl complaining, but about doing something. Before you go, I want to uh, talk a little bit about uh, some things that are being done to prevent women from going through with uh, abortions that they may want. You mentioned before we came on the air, the period tracking app. That's crazy. Mm -hmm. that, that's big brother to the 10th degree. Tell me about that. Yes. So there are many different period tracking apps. And um, from and what I've app been- it actually tracks women's menstrual cycles. Yeah, it helps you keep up with ovulation, um, fertility periods and when your period will come on. And so what has been able to happen is that the data from that, from those apps, I believe that they are able to get that information to law enforcement to see like, say for instance, if you stop having a period or you stop putting it on the app, um, stuff like that to track whether you are potentially thinking about getting an abortion or whether you are potentially pregnant. And they're also looking at, um, tracking websites to see who is looking at or looking for abortion clinics. Mm. Is that legal? I guess in some states they are trying to make it legal. Yeah. Oh my goodness. So um, there are no uh, physical options other than, again, um, and this is just so heart wrenching, you know, other than, uh, again, you know, uh, advocating for yourself, for your rights, contacting your elected officials, women and men who are involved in unwanted pregnancies, they really don't have at this point any options, mm -hmm. any legal options. <laughs> Unless you just figure out a way to travel across state lines, um, that's about the only option right now. If you can right. travel to a state that still has abortion. Yeah. And and again, um, and and we don't know at this point, you there is there a way to find that that out what states are still legalizing it or have legalized it? Yeah, but I think you just have to be careful with trying to figure that out. Cause like I said, some places are monitoring who, who are looking at these things, but I believe North Carolina, I think you're safe in North Carolina. I think you're safe in California. Those are the two that I know of for sure. So I believe that you are safe in North Carolina. North Carolina and California. Bree, anything else you want to share with us about this uh, groundbreaking decision and, and what we need to be uh, aware of and conscientious about? Just pay attention. Get more involved politically. Figure out how you can get involved politically and just figure out how you can help because right now we are at a monumental time in our country. And also just make sure you're voting and vote in the entrance, uh, in, in your interest. Don't vote against your own interests. Yeah. Brie Maxwell uh, joins us. She is a um, CEO and principal at a political consulting firm, Indigo. She's been on several media outlets and also worked on several successful uh, media campaigns, and she joins us today with her, her perspective on Roe versus Wade here on Coping with Trey Taylor. Brie, thank you so much for joining us. We appreciate you. Thank you. Computers, they're a part of our everyday life, but when they're not working, they're an everyday problem. So call Computers Unique, your everyday solution. 803-351-5821. Is your computer running slow? Won't turn on? Do you need a screen replaced? Or maybe you just need another computer? Well, Computers Unique is your one-stop shop for all your computer needs. They have a wide variety of new and pre-owned PCs, Macs, and tablets. So call Computers Unique, Dutch Square Mall. 803-351-5821. 803-351-5821. Five one five eight two one. 
Hey, thank you so much for joining us today for Coping with Trey Taylor. I'm Trey Taylor. Listen, if you have a story or initiative that could help someone cope or cope with COVID, please email booking at copingwithtraytaylor.com. The information is scrolling at the bottom of the screen. If you have a uh, product or service that could help someone cope or cope with COVID, please email copingwithtraytaylor at gmail.com. Copingwithtraytaylor at gmail.com. We would love for you to be a proud sponsor, just like In It Together SC and the Diabetes Action Council. They sponsor Wellness Wednesday every Wednesday here on Coping with COVID. And our other sponsors include Agape Counseling and Training Services, the Comet Bus System, Black Pages Black Expo, Computers Unique Dutch Square Mall, Javis Tax Services, Palmetto Media Connections, and a Fifth Circuit Solicitor's Office Attorney, Byron Gibson. Now, tomorrow we'll talk with Idris Pearson and his about his journey as a filmmaker. It's a fascinating uh story and uh we'll share some of the clips from his upcoming films and so much more idris pearson and his journey as a filmmaker that's coming up tomorrow on coping with trey taylor as usual i leave you with a reading we've been reading conversations with god i'm actually going to uh, start reading another book that somebody shared with me that's really good but today this says remember my child this is god talking to us just for today i will give you your daily bread so don't worry about tomorrow because tomorrow will take care of itself or I will take care of it. Our father says, it's time for you to trust me. Believe my word. Abraham considered not his own body, but he considered my word. Don't allow the enemy to confuse you. You know, I am not the author of confusion. My word is my word and my word stands. That's Conversations with God from uh, Cheryl Mims Williams with Agape Counseling and Training Services. I'm Trey Taylor. Thank you so much for joining us today. Hey, don't forget what Bree, what Tamika, and what Diaska said. We have got to be more politically involved. We've got to vote. We've got to make sure we know what the issues are and who is for us, who aligns with the things that are in our best interest as women, as African-Americans, as a people in general. So please, when it's your opportunity to vote, not only vote, take someone else with you and scream it from the rooftops. It's time to vote. It makes such a difference. Hey, until the next time, I wish you peace, abundant blessings, take care, God bless, stay well, and don't forget, COVID is still real, y'all. <laughs> so if you're in crowds, don't forget to wear your mask over your nose and under your chin. We'll see you tomorrow. Promoting learning what you can do Six ways to a better you